Antarctica, the seventh and southernmost continent in the world, is the coldest, driest and windiest place on Earth. It and the surrounding waters of the Southern Ocean are home to more than 9,000 species that aren't found anywhere else on Earth, including leopard seals, orcas, seven species of penguins and polar bears. No, not polar bears, that's the North Pole. Antarctica has been called the world's last frontier. It is a pristine corner of the planet that leaders have long seen value in preserving. In fact, at the height of the Cold War, 14 nations signed the Antarctic Treaty, agreeing to protect the continent of Antarctica as a place of peace and science. Penguins and other species were saved. Well, their habitat on land was saved. But what about the waters where they hunted for food? Unfortunately, the entire southern ocean was left open to commercial fishing and other exploitations. This spawned a fishing frenzy for Antarctic krill, a tiny shrimp-like crustacean that is processed into animal feed and omega-3 supplements. They may not look like much, but krill form the base of the entire southern ocean food web. Without them, penguins and other predators are put at risk. Marine scientists, already worried about the devastating impacts of climate change on Antarctica, raised the alarm when they saw that the krill race was quickly expanding. World leaders responded in 1980 by creating the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, or CAMELAR. CAMELAR's mandate is to conserve Antarctic marine life. Conserve. To keep something safe from being damaged or destroyed to use something carefully in order to prevent loss or waste. But while Kamala was responding to interesting krill, another fishing frenzy began, this time for toothfish, a top predator in the Southern Ocean. Diners call it Chilean sea bass, and fishermen call it white gold, because the catch is highly valuable. Unfortunately, illegal fishing quickly wreaked havoc on populations of this important predator. As demand for krill and toothfish increased, it became clear a new approach was needed. And in 2009, Kamalar had a bright idea. It designated the first marine protected area in the South Orkney Islands, keeping those waters free from industrial fishing. It was a good start, but they knew they needed to do more. So in 2011, Kamala committed to establishing a network of large marine protected areas around the Southern Ocean. It was a big promise that is backed by the best available science. Experts say that we should be designating almost a third of our oceans as highly protected in order to support sustainable, healthy oceans that are resilient to climate change. It's been four years since Kamala's promise and we are still waiting for this large network of marine protected areas around the Southern Ocean. Today, climate change and industrial fishing continue to threaten vulnerable areas like the Ross Sea, while less than 2% of the world's oceans are highly protected. At a time when 85% of the world's fisheries are in decline, we know we can do a lot better than that. But it's not too late for Kamala to make good on their promise and return to their primary mission. Remember what the second C stands for? Kamala was created to conserve. Conserve the Southern Ocean, its krill, penguins, toothfish and other marine life. But Kamala must act now to create marine reserves and show the world they mean business about protecting the most pristine and special place on the planet. <laughs>